Hello, I'm Ryan F9 and up on the hills behind me there is a wind farm. Now we're gonna try to get as close to a windmill as possible. And while I do it, I'm gonna vlog about the danger of motorcycling. I always find that people love to say how dangerous motorcycles are without actually saying how dangerous motorcycles are. I mean, vague terms like street lethal and donor cycle, I think it makes someone feel better about driving a Volvo, but they don't actually mean anything. All right, let's get riding. Woo! <laughs> All right. I love riding, riding uh, windmill terrain. We did a lot of this around the Gaspé Z, and it's just like, made me addicted, man. It tends to just be so scenic and there's so many dirt roads. It's just awesome. Okay. Uh, I mean, way to start, eh? I mean, look at this road. It's beautiful right off the bat. Okay. So, I mean, as I was saying, uh, people don't actually want to say how dangerous motorcycles are. That's the topic of our vlog today. I went ahead and crunched the numbers. Um, if you're watching this on the Fortnite website, you can find the math right below this video. If you're watching it on YouTube, uh, too bad. Too bad. I guess uh, I'll link to it in the description or something like that. But, um, oh, yes. Turned to dirt really fast. Oh. Oh. <laughs> there goes the back end. Uh, so yeah, I crunched the numbers. I, um, I basically looked at vehicle statistics in Canada between, I think it was 2008 and 2013, and averaged across that time frame. Um, I looked at light vehicle driver deaths, so ignoring the, uh, the passengers and ignoring trucks and school buses and that kind of thing, and found out how many uh, people died in car crashes on Canadian roads. Look at this! This is gorgeous! Um, and then I did the same for motorcyclists. I found out how many motorcyclists died on public roads in Canada, again, ignoring their passengers. And I found out that the ratio was about 5.5 to 1. Um, oh, it seems sad to talk about death and stuff on such a gorgeous sunny day in such gorgeous country. Anyway, 5.5 to 1 uh, for every 5.5 people that die driving a car or a truck or some kind of passenger vehicle on public roads in Canada, one motorcycle driver or rider dies. Um, so that was that ratio, and then after that it was just a question of um, looking at the number of registered vehicles in Canada over that time frame, and the average kilometers traveled by uh, a, a car and by a motorcycle, so then I could get the ratio 75 to 1, which is the ratio of uh, light vehicle kilometers to motorcycle kilometers in Canada. So for every 75 kilometers that the average Canadian car travels, uh, a Canadian motorcycle travels 1 kilometer. Is this a stop sign for me? I don't know. Oh! Man, it's so good. So I love dirt roads. You don't even have to break the speed limits necessarily. You can just get like so out of shape. Like, fool around without any of the, uh, <laughs> any of the real danger. So yeah, danger in motorcycles. So 75 to 1 kilometer to kilometer and 5.5 to 1 death to death. You'd expect those ratios to be equal if driving a car and riding a motorcycle were equally dangerous, but they're not. So, uh, so they're off by a ratio of, oh, hold on, after this corner. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, power drifts always distract me. Um, they're off by a ratio of 13.5. Uh, so basically that means that motorcycle riders are 13.5 times more likely to be killed in a car crash or vehicle incidents on public roads in Canada, which kind of sucks. <laughs> oh, but that cheers me up. Um, anyway, so the thing though is that I'm not dead yet. I've been riding around all day, I'm riding around out here, and I'm not dead yet. Um, so maybe the number 13.5 isn't quite right. I certainly feel safer than that. Um, and to be honest, it's true. I, I can actually feel safer than that, and my number is probably much lower than the 13.5 average. I'll tell you what I mean. So, according to the Hurt Report, uh, which is like that famous motorcycle study, uh, oh, it was about 50% of motorcycle accidents involve riders who've been on their bikes for less than five months. Well, I've been on this V-Strom here for about two years. 
Um, woo! So I can officially drop my number 13.5 there. Oh, look at those windmills. Ah, oh, yeah, we're getting in nice and close to them now. This is good. I heard um, that the wings are about the size of a 747 plane wing on some of the biggest windmills. I don't know if these are the biggest. Um, and the tips will be going 200 miles an hour when they're fully sort of rotating at the highest speed, which is really cool. Oh, look at that. That is awesome. Oh, uh, looks like it's closed off though. Um, this one, yeah, it's closed too. That's a shame. See, in the Gatsby-Z, you could like go right up to him, sit underneath him and stuff, but this is, um, uh, yeah, private access. Bummer. Oh, well. C'est la vie. I will probably ride very happily anywhere they let me ride up here because this is absolutely gorgeous. I'm not going to complain. Oh, uh, yeah, amazing. So anyway, speaking of good news, so we are dropping that number 13.5 um, by looking at how long you've been on your bike. You can also look at, um, what was the study? In Ontario, they did a study and it showed that about 25% of motorcycle deaths uh, involved alcohol. So if you always ride sober, believe it or not, I'm riding sober right now, I always ride sober, um, then you can drop your risk factor there again. The same study of Ontario found that speed was a contributing factor in about 12% of motorcycle deaths, I think. Um, so if you always keep it within the limits, you can drop your factor there too. Um, in Quebec, uh, when they instituted mandatory motorcycle training, um, oh, look at this. Oh, there's just windmills everywhere up here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I wonder how big this array is. Absolutely massive. Um, so when the Institute of Mandatory Motorcycle Training in Quebec, as I was saying, 46% um, of motorcycle deaths like immediately fell off afterwards. So my recent graduation from motorcycle school probably counts for something as well. Um, what else could we say? Uh, we could borrow from our friends to the south. In America, they have stats on ABS systems. They don't have stats like that in Canada. Um, but, uh, oh, it just keeps getting prettier. <laughs> oh, I feel so blessed to be riding around out here. It's unreal. Um, uh, what was I talking about? The States. Yes, if we're going to borrow from the States, uh, they found there that I think it was 37%. You're 37% less likely um, to be killed in a motorcycle crash if you're riding a motorcycle that has ABS. Well, this motorcycle does have ABS. I found it kind of a cheeky way to turn it off when I want to sort of mess around off-road. Um, but if I have the ABS on, that counts for something. Um, probably what counts for the most is ATGAT. All the gear, all the time. I mean, it's kind of hard to put a number on it because everyone gears up differently, but not every Canadian has a full-face helmet, a fully armored jacket, fully armored pants, motorcycle boots, etc., etc. So if the average motorcyclist 13.5 times more likely to die in a car crash, well, the average motorcyclist isn't geared up 100% all the time. So if I gear up 100% all the time, uh, well, then that's going to decrease my risk factor a bit more. I think that's probably, ooh, cul-de-sac. Um, uh, we'll see about that. I just want to keep getting close to these windmills. So if that's a cul-de-sac, uh, well, we'll see. We will see. Ooh. Can I come through here? I think so. If I'm riding up your driveway right now, I sincerely apologize. Woo! But you have an absolutely stellar driveway if this is yours. This is dope! Oh yeah, this is way more technical now. Look at how close we are to that! Oh, cool! Apparently you can park a minivan on top of the turbine there. Apparently that's how big it is. It's hard to tell because it's so high up. Oh, this road's just getting better. It's getting steep. Oh, yeah. When in doubt, throttle it out. Yes. Ugh. This is so good. So anyway, as I was saying, um, you know, the number 13.5 kind of sucks. It sucks if we're that much more likely to be killed in an accident. But the good news is... It's 13.5 for an average Canadian motorcyclist, and you have a choice. You do not have to be... Oh, it's getting slick in here. This is kind of kind of slippery. You do not have to be an average Canadian motorcyclist, right? You can choose to be 100% sober all the time, 100% within speed limits. Um, you can choose to be... Uh, what else did I even say? You can choose to be 100% um, familiar with your motorcycle. 
all these things. And the day when 100% of bikes have ABS and traction control will probably never arrive. Uh, hopefully, anyway. And for every way that you choose to be better than average, now your number 13.5 is going to drop. Oh, this is good. Still private access, but this is probably as close as I'm going to get. Ah, oh, it's so pretty. Matt, what a ride, eh? And it didn't actually feel that dangerous. I never feel that endangered when I motorcycle. And I can't actually tell you exactly what my risk factor would be. The math won't really tell you that, but it's something that I can feel and I feel comfortable with it. 